Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. And welcome to the Outlook for July. And this is the Sidereal Vedic Astrology Outlook for the month of July 2021. So what do we have happening this month? Now I know there's a lot going on out there in the collective. There's this, what is it, cyber polygon event or something by the World Economic Forum and there might be aliens landing and you know, I mean, just what is the next thing, right? There's going to be something going on. I'm not going to get into any of that this month. And there's a really big reason as to why I'm not getting into any of that this month. And that is because I do believe we have got such a big opportunity to do some amazing inner work this month. Some amazing healing work is very possible this month. And that's because we've got Jupiter going retrograde in Aquarius and in particular in Satyabhishak. Those are the days that I'm particularly interested in. And I'm going to cover that in all the mini breakdowns. I'm going to show you in your area of life, in your chart, what areas are being affected and where is there the greatest potential for you to do some great healing work this month. So that's what I'm going to focus on in the mini breakdowns. I myself am doing some really cool healing work this month. I, it has just come into my life. I think on the weekend I started this, this new healing program. I'm super excited uh, to get into it and as a result, actually, because I'm spending some time doing that, I have taken my website down for a short time. Those of you who are booked, well done for booking at this time. You've booked at a really brilliant time because the energies are great to be doing readings, consultations, all this kind of work. So you've booked at absolutely the perfect time. And I will, of course, be devoting my full attention uh, and energy to you guys when I do a reading. Firstly, I enjoy doing them so much and I feel like I get some good energy. I get, I don't know, I, I get some, I come out of those sessions feeling really good. So I, I don't know why that is, but that, that happens. So <laughs> I will, of course, be doing. So if you've booked in, you're booked, I'm looking after you. Um, if you would like to book a session, then come back sort of around maybe mid-July uh, to early August. Come back around that time and you'll be able to book your session. There is no wait list. I know when I've taken my website down before a lot of people email me and they ask me about a wait list. I don't have a wait list but um, what I will be trying to do is I will try to create more sessions uh, in August if I can to make up for any time lost. Um, you will definitely get a spot so don't, don't you worry about that. Uh, you will definitely be able to to, to book in. So, um, and those of you who are booked in know that I am devoting my, my best energy to you at this time. The other thing is I may not be doing as many videos um, over this month. So uh, I know this week I doubt there's going to be a pick a card. I apologize about that. I love doing those, by the way. I get so much out of doing them. Um, and it's funny, you know, it's the content that has the least views. I actually quite I like making that quite a lot, so <laughs> I, I, they will continue. I don't mind how what the views are. I, I make what I make, so um, so know that I'll, I'll probably start the picker cards again from next week. But I'm just going to give myself a little bit of a breather this week because there's a lot going on in my world, uh, and I do think that this is an absolutely incredible time to do some healing. So. In the overview for this month, I'm not going to be doing a news matchup. Um, you can see I've, I'm I'm just I'm going within. I, I you know there's a lot happening for me. So um, why is this a good time to go within? Well, I'm going to tell you. So we've got Jupiter in retrograde, and that's going to be the main focus of this episode. He began his retrograde on the 21st of June, and he will be in retrograde until 18th October. Okay, now for most of this is going to be in Aquarius. There will be a very small portion where Jupiter will dip back into Capricorn where he's going to be debilitated. Now I'm going to tell you the dates for that small portion. That is 15 September to 21 November. For that portion, I do believe, and that's coinciding with winter in the Northern Hemisphere. Now winter has been 
traditionally over the many years, uh, over the decades, that has been a time where people make kind of doom and gloom predictions, right? They'll say the stock market's gonna crash and this is gonna happen, that bad thing's gonna happen, every bad thing's gonna happen in autumn, winter, right? In the Northern Hemisphere, it's, it's traditionally always predict predicted. Um, having said that, we have Saturn in Capricorn and we saw what happened to our world when Saturn stepped into Capricorn, Feb, March, 2020, right? When he stepped in there, whole world started shutting down. So now we're quite a bit deeper into Saturn in Capricorn. We're quite deep there. So I do think that this is going to be a tough winter for the Northern Hemisphere, uh, definitely for, you know, United States, UK, Europe, definitely the Western world, because the Western world is getting quite a bit of a, um, well, it's being renewed. <laughs> How about I say it that way? I have been covering that in past videos. Those of you who've been watching me for a while, you've seen me talk about that. Hopefully, maybe August onwards, I get to create some videos where I do some long range predicting. I have a lot of ideas on that. Those of you who are getting personal readings from me, I do talk about that. I do talk about the next five to 10 years uh, and what I see there. So hopefully I get some time and some breathing space in August onwards to create more videos. Um, so keep your eyes peeled for that. But I do think from 15 September to 21 November, that is gonna be a difficult time in the world. Uh, more difficult than normal, absolutely. But if we come back to this month, and if we come back to the focus for this month and the opportunity that's in front of us to heal ourselves, our, our you know, our mind, body and soul, this is a great time to do some significant healing. So I'm saying that that's gonna be while Jupiter is in retrograde and while he's in retrograde through Aquarius. So we're looking at, you know, uh, 21 June through to 15 September. It's gonna be an amazing time to do healing work, okay? The absolute best time is July, is 1 July through to 20 July. That is gonna be the absolute best time to do healing work. And I've got noted here, these are excellent days for healing and consulting an expert, a practitioner, a guru, okay? And what kind of energy work is good now? I would say past life regression work, um, ancestral clearing. There's this thing called DNA cleansing, you know, and, and these kind of etheric things where they work on your energy body. Right? These people who don't touch you, they don't lay a finger on you, and yet they're healing you, they're cleansing you, they're, they're working through all your stuff. This is an excellent time to be doing that kind of work. So if you're able to, to consult with someone, to work with someone in that way, this is a really good time. The other thing that's going to make this an excellent time for that, I do believe, is uh, the new moon that's in Gemini Punar Vasu. This is a great new moon. This is happening on the 10th of July, right in the middle of that window, 1st July to 20 July. We've got, bang, right in the middle there, we've got a new moon, uh, Gemini Punar Vasu. Now, this is significant because, you know, healing activities that I mentioned just now, ancestral healing, um, where they look at your aura, they're looking at your etheric body, right? Etheric, uh, they're healing you on an etheric level, ether, Jupiter, right? This is perfect. But what's needed for that? You need to travel through the levels of consciousness. And that's Punarvasu. Okay, in Punarvasu, that is the nakshatra where, you know, the guru or expert or the practitioner who's working on your field etherically, they're going to need to travel through dimensions of consciousness. Okay, so this is really a great time to be doing that kind of work. Now, there is a full moon happening in Capricorn, Uttra Ashada, 24th of July. I've got the note here where you can experience a fullness in relation to your incarnation on its own not attached to anyone else. So just imagine if you have been able to do some significant healing work this month, you get the reward of that beautiful full moon where you experience your own self as a being. You're just, you're just experiencing your own beingness, not connected in with anyone else. 
how beautiful right connecting with you and the world and the sky and nothing else and the fullness of that feeling the fullness of that how amazing and yeah i'm focusing all the mini readings on this on you know on this the reason being that i think that this is going to be this is the greatest gift we give to the collective right our own peace our own peacefulness um, if we're peaceful that's a great contribution to the collective and there are so many people out there who are so worried and anxious about what's going to happen what's coming next uh, and we can do each other a favor by 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 putting the anxieties down uh, you know and, and doing some healing work if that's if that's at all possible so why don't we get into these mini readings where I'm going to break down for each of you where will be the areas um, where you're able to to heal some aspect of your life let's see let's see if that's possible and it you don't have to consult anyone the other thing I also want to say is that and this is something that I've said in my um, in various places on the channel I have said this that you do not need to spend any money in order to heal right there's enough free information on the internet that if you wanted to use that to become enlightened you can okay so don't feel like you need to uh, work with anyone else I did get a question by someone the other day which was about you know um, is it good to work with an intermediary I do think there are advantages to working with someone I think there are huge advantages the main one being that you can speed up the entire process if you want to change quickly it's great to work with people then I think yes work work with people and you'll be able to achieve the same result but but in a, in a far quicker time but you don't you don't need to spend money or work with people if, if that's um, if that's not you know if it's not the right time or, or whatever it, it's it's perfectly fine you can do a lot on your own I'm a big believer in that all right well why don't we take a look why don't we go through the zodiac we're going to go through the whole thing how are we doing 12 minutes not bad okay so let's take a look let's welcome aries 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 welcome to your outlook so we're going to take a look and see what's coming up for you this month so we've got jupiter retrograding in your 11th house okay now jupiter is lord of your 12th and 9th houses so i'm going to factor all of the, these three houses in so in the context of healing this is an excellent time from now until mid-september to work with experts and gurus to heal anything around your spirituality how you manifest abundance and your own inner authority the possibility for healing is especially good while Jupiter transits Satyabhishak Nakshatra from 1 July to 20 July. That's across the board. I'm saying that for every single sign. This is a really great time to do some healing work. And this could be healing work that you do on your own. Maybe there's a favorite book of yours that you like to reread, you like to go back to. For me, it's, oh, if only I had it with me, I would show you, it's Letting Go. I love that book and I keep rereading it. And I keep rereading the same stuff. There, there it is, I can see it now. <laughs> um, I keep rereading the same stuff, but every time I just go, oh my God, yeah, I have to keep doing that because we forget, we forget. So the new moon, the new moon, where is that happening for you? Now that's happening in your third house on 10th July. So there's a real renewal that's possible here in terms of your confidence could even be in terms of your self-image maybe you want to brush up that social media of yours um, whatever that might be but I do feel it's quite an inward thing this time because we've got that Satya Bishak energy there so I think a, a renewal in your confidence and if you've been battling any inner demons you should feel so strong and able to just conquer you know um, and put in place some new habits some new ways you're going to have some good energy to do that on the 10th of July and we've got a full moon for you in 10th house that's the 24th of July so hopefully you'll be able to witness the fullness or completion in something something in relation to your work 
Maybe a project is going to come to an end. Maybe a dynamic with a boss is going to come to an end. Maybe you're going to, there's some lesson that you're going to complete on when it comes to your work. So do be looking out for that Aries. But I mean, I think it's looking like a really good month for you, especially when it comes to doing that inner work, reclaiming that inner authority. Yeah, I'm just kind of going through this and I'm seeing Jupiter as your ninth Lord, the new moon opposite there. It's beautiful. I think you'll be able to, you know, and reclaiming your inner authority is definitely looking to yourself for approval. No longer looking to, to well, certainly Father, right? We're in the ninth house there. But it's like whatever you deem as being authority, you don't need to look to that anymore. You can, you can reference yourself and be stronger in that. So Aries, thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to welcome Taurus. Taurus, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now we've got Jupiter retrograde in your 10th house. Jupiter is Lord of your 11th house and your 8th house as well. Okay, so in the context of healing, this is going to be a really good time from now until mid-September to work with experts and gurus to heal anything around your career, how you manifest abundance, and your family and your extended family. So this is pretty amazing. If you wanted to do Taurus, some form of ancestral healing or something that something that just protects your energy from the energy of everyone around you, everyone connected to you, this is a really good time for that. I've got the note here, the potential for healing is especially good while Jupiter transits Satya Bishak Nakshatra from 1st July to 20 July. Absolutely. This is across the board and I'm saying this to all signs. 1 July to 20 July, this is going to be your best window to do some very deep inner healing and to really combat, you know, this is light versus dark. This is Satya Bishak. This is, I'm going to conquer the demons, you know. Sometimes we're not aware of our own demons. No, I certainly haven't been, but I've been made aware of some and <laughs> it's very interesting. So um, look, it's, it's an amazing time to do some significant healing work that, that will transform you for, for a really long time. Uh, you've got a new moon happening in your second house, that's 10th July. So a renewal in family relations is certainly possible. And we've got the full moon happening in your ninth house, that's 24th July. So hopefully you graduate to a new level of inner authority. It's interesting, I was just talking about inner authority for Aries as well. That was kind of standing out for me, for them too, because of Jupiter there. But for you guys, <coughs> that's linking in with the, um, with the full moon there, being in that position of inner authority. Hopefully you feel like, and hopefully you notice within yourself that you don't need to look to external sources of authority so much that you're taking charge of your own life. Perhaps, I mean, if you're doing some healing work, perhaps you are doing it on your own. You know, um, the guru could be, the guru could be, well, your higher self or your future, one of your future selves that has graduated and figured out all this stuff. Right, we've got that beautiful new moon happening there. Look at that in the second house. This could be you communicating with your own self, in fact. How fascinating. But I definitely think there's a massive possibility for great healing from the 1st of July to the 20th of July. So see how that goes, Taurus. I'm excited for your month ahead, especially if you choose to work within, if you choose to do some deep inner work, I'm sure you're going to be rewarded for that. So thank you so much for tuning in, Taurus. And we are now going to welcome Gemini. Gemini, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So now Jupiter is retrograde in your ninth house. And Jupiter is the lord of your tenth and seventh houses. So in the context of healing, this is going to be an amazing time from now until mid-September for you to work with experts and gurus to heal anything around 
your inner authority. I've been talking about that for the last two signs, but this is coming up for you as well. Uh, your career and your marriage. And now if you're not married, this can be a time where you energetically upgrade that space of partner. You've got a space by your side, right? If you want to get married in the future. And this is something that, that I, I've certainly done where, you know, um, yeah, I, I, I visualize that space as a partner and, uh, you know, just that, that that be a beautiful space for that person, that be a loving space, that there is a space, you know? And, and I think that that could be something that you're doing at, at this time. You could be, if you would like to get married and you're not married, you can work with um, gurus, experts, healers to, to get that space ready for the right person to come in. Of course, you can also study your D9 chart in some depth. You know, that D9 chart is uh, energetically showing you, mapping out who that person is, you know, so you can, you can spend time with that. And I do believe that as we do healing work, as we make ourselves better inside and we, you know, upgrade our own hearts and our own ability to love, I think we keep attracting, yes, D9, but higher octaves of D9 better versions of D9, you know, so we do have a type, we do attract a similar type of person again and again, but I, I think we can keep uh, attracting uh, higher octaves of the same similar type of person anyway. So the possibility for healing is especially good while Jupiter transits Satyabhishak Nakshatra from 1 July to 20 July. We've got a new moon happening in your first house, 10th of July, so a renewal in your physical body uh, or your sense of self as a whole is quite possible. So this could be an amazing time to plant seeds for, for yourself, you know, um, and for what you would like to heal in yourself. Maybe that's as much as you're doing this month, you know. Um, some people will be healing themselves in a deeper way or working with people, etc. But, you know, maybe you're very busy in your corporate career now uh, and we do have energy here that's showing that you might be. Um, maybe all you have time for is just to plant a seed on the 10th of July, just to write a little affirmation for, you know, what it is that you would like um, to heal in your physical body or what it is that you would like to improve about your entire sense of self. You know, this, this could be a good time for that. So that's the 10th of July. Uh, and the full moon is in your eighth house. Okay, so that's the 24th of July. So hopefully you're able to gain a new understanding of your extended family, uh, of family relationships, of your place within the family. Maybe something's going to culminate in that area of family or other people's uh, assets, shared wealth, that kind of thing. So it's an amazing time, Gemini, and I'm wishing you well. I'm wishing you time, time so that you're able to really go within, go within and try to make the best of that good Satyabhishak energy. Try, try to go deep within and discover, you know, all that's within you, the richness, the great richness that lies inside. Gemini, thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome Cancer. Cancer, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Just going to check the time. Yes, the time is running out, so I'll probably have to stitch it together. Doesn't matter. Uh, we've got Jupiter in retrograde. Jupiter is in retrograde in your eighth house. Okay, and Jupiter. Hi, Cancer. Sorry, the memory card filled up and it, I don't know, it all collapsed on me. So, um, why don't I just begin from the beginning? Uh, I'll just start from the beginning. Jupiter. We're talking about Jupiter. Of course we are. I'm wearing yellow. I'm wearing his color. Um, Jupiter is in retrograde in your eighth house. Jupiter is lord of your ninth and sixth houses. Okay, let me just look up the chart and see what's going on here. I've got to get my bearings. <coughs> Apologies about this. So in the context of healing, this is going to be an amazing time from now until mid-September. It's going to be a great time for you to work with gurus, experts, any of those kind of people to heal anything around extended family, your career, 
an ability to serve through your career as well. And also relationship with father as well, um, or that inner sense of authority, you know, you just reclaiming that, you not needing approval from the external world so much. You're going to be able to quite possibly pull, pull some of that power that maybe you've invested outside, bring it back in. This is a really good time for that. I've got the note here, the possibility for healing is especially good while Jupiter transits Sattva Bishak Nakshatra from 1 July to 20 July. I'm saying that for every single sign. It's so true. This is the time. If you want to do some healing, if you want to go within, if you want to tackle some of those inner demons, this is really the time to do it. We've got the new moon happening in your 12th house. So that's 10th July. So there's a very real possibility of renewal in your spirituality. Maybe you're going to have a new insight. Maybe you're going to graduate to some new level of understanding. You're going to get some new ahas. You're going to get some insights happen at this time. So that's pretty exciting. Could be a really good time, actually. 12th house. Great time to keep a dream journal. <clears throat> Could be really good for that. We've got the full moon in your seventh house on 24th of July. So something might complete in your marriage uh, or you come to a complete understanding. Something could culminate, perhaps some dynamic in your marriage. Maybe if there's something that's been going on that, you know, and you know, I always find that when you come to peace, with something that's when it goes away so you see I was just thinking about something that you might be resisting or something that's not going so well in your marriage would that complete maybe not <laughs> it might be but you know it's it's the kind of thing that when there's a dynamic between you and someone else the moment you're just cool about it then it really does complete and you've graduated and it, it's that Byron Katie thing of where she says you know I, I welcome the next time that that happens you know um, and when you're able to welcome the next time then you're done you've graduated so hopefully something completes in your marriage maybe you come to peace about something maybe there's something that you don't need to be tested on anymore uh, and you know that you don't need to be tested on it when you'd happily have that come again kind of thing you know what I'm saying you're, you're cancer moon of course you know what I'm saying <laughs> you're a master of emotions right um, but yeah I mean look I think this is going to be a good month I definitely think this is a great time to be going within to be working on our shadows to be bringing more light into our personal selves and, and into our lives so cancer I'm excited for this month for you I wish you well and we are now going to welcome Leo. Leo, welcome Leo. Thank you so much for joining. Now we've got Jupiter retrograde in your seventh house and Jupiter is Lord of your eighth and fifth houses. So in the context of healing, this is going to be an amazing time from now until mid-September for you to work with experts and gurus to heal anything around your marriage uh, your extended family, yes, Lord of the Eighth there, and your children. Your children, if you don't have children, your creativity. How you create, you know, perhaps you're creatively blocked. Maybe you need to work with someone to unblock that. And if you heard my introduction earlier where I was talking about working with an intermediary, Working with somebody is great because they can speed up the process. And look, if you can't work with someone, you can totally do all of this work on your own. I'm a big believer in that as well. Uh, you can always do all of this work for free on your own. I'm always a believer in that. Always, always. So let's take a look here. Um, now I've got the note here. The possibility for healing is especially good while Jupiter transits Sattva Bishak Nakshatra from 1 July to 20 July. I'm saying this for all signs, 1 July to 20 July, this is a great time to do healing work. <coughs> and I know many of you are healers who are tuning in to me, but uh, you know, any, any one of us who's doing this kind of work, we need to consult people too, right? So um, this could be a good time for you to either take some time out or 
to, to actively work with someone on your personal healing. Now we've got a new moon happening in your 11th house. That's 10th July. So there's a renewal quite possible in your ability to manifest. Maybe you're going to skill up. Maybe you're going to get some amazing ideas at this time. Maybe you want to keep a notebook with you for some downloads, some things that just pop into your mind. Uh, your ability to manifest can definitely get an upgrade or this is something that you can wish for at that time. You know, maybe you want to wish for that. Um, that could be a really good thing to wish for. Now we've got a full moon happening in your sixth house. That's the 24th of July. So hopefully something completes in relation to your career, uh, your business, maybe you're a self-employed person. Maybe there's a legal case that you're hoping for something to complete or a legal matter. This could be the time, that's 24th July, where that might happen. So Leo, I think this is going to be a good month for you. I'm excited, especially for your possibility and every sign's possibility to do some magnificent healing work. So that's self work, inner work, uh, working with somebody else. This is a really, really great time to do that. So Leo, thank you so much for stopping by. And we are now going to welcome Virgo. Virgo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now we've got Jupiter retrograde in your sixth house and Jupiter is Lord of your seventh and fourth houses. So in the context of healing, this is going to be an amazing time from now until mid-September to work with experts and gurus to heal anything around the areas of your marriage, your career and your home life. So that is covering quite a lot for you guys. The possibility for healing is especially good while Jupiter transits Satta Bishak Nakshatra. That's from 1 July to 20 July. And I'm saying that across the board for everybody. Those are going to be the key dates that you're going to want to do your healing work. Now, and of course, if you can't work with a guru or any of that, you can do it on your own. You know, you can just, just by sitting and writing, uh, you're kind of taking things from your etheric body and you're putting it on paper. It doesn't work when you type on a computer. You have to write it on paper and then somehow destroy the paper. That's always a good thing to do. Uh, We've got a new moon happening in your 10th house on the 10th of July. So a renewal in your career is possible. There is a full moon in your fifth house. That's 24th July. So hopefully something completes in relation to your children. And if you don't have children, your creativity. Now this new moon on the 10th of July, I'm quite interested in that. You can wish for something there with your career and perhaps you might want to expand your ability to do more, to take more clients, to have a higher output. You can definitely wish for that on the 10th of July. Uh, and on the 24th of July, that is looking quite nice there. I mean, some something's going to complete and maybe if it's not so much completion, try to on the 24th of July, take some time to look back and to see, you know, and I mean, you could even just do that now. Look back and see how far you've come. See that you are really good. See that you have been working really hard. See the culmination, see the fullness of something that you do creatively that you couldn't do several years ago and feel good about that. Try and get a bit of time to celebrate that. If you can do that on the 24th of July, brilliant. But if you want, you can even just spend some moments and do that now. I always think it's okay to just, um, you know, watch the report and, and do the work a bit early. You can, you know. Um, but I do notice that some people will tune in closer to these dates and they do watch it again. So that's really interesting. Some of you are very good at doing things on the day. Uh, me, I'm the kind of person that I watch my report and I just do the stuff soon after I've watched the report. But yeah, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, okay, so Virgo, thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome Libra. Libra, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, Jupiter is retrograde in your fifth house. And Jupiter is Lord of your sixth and third houses. So in the context of healing, this is going to be an excellent time from now until mid-September 
to work with experts and gurus to heal anything around your creativity. If you have any blockages in your creativity, it's a great time to get that unblocked. <laughs> um, your career and your confidence. Look at that. All these three are very tightly linked, aren't they? Uh, because your creativity is very much needed in your career, your confidence is very much needed in your career as well. So if you can heal any one of those things, it's going to make a major impact on the others. So this could be a good time to, to look at those things. Now the possibility for healing is especially good while Jupiter transits Satthabishak Nakshatra from 1 July to 20 July. That's across the board for every single sign. It's a great time to get some healing work done. Jupiter's retrograde, he's going back. So he's going to be covering that old ground again. And especially if you've got like a significant planet there, if you've got your moon, um, well, if you're here, you're a Libra moon. You don't have that kind of moon. But maybe your ascendant, right? Maybe your sun, maybe some significant planet is sitting there in Satyabhishak. And uh, this could be a really, really good time to do some healing work. So I've got a new moon happening in your ninth house. And by the way, Libra moon could be here, but Libra ascendant could be here. Libra sun could be here. You could be different types of Libra. Okay. Now, new moon is happening in your ninth house. Let's take a look at that. Yes, it is. That's 10th July. So you might come to new levels of inner authority. I always love talking about this, this ninth house where we've got this concept of authority because we see the father here. And, you know, very often the father is the authority in our life and we do everything to impress him. But then there comes a time where you mature and you're no longer kind of seeking that approval. You kind of, you, you go beyond, right? And you're, you're here and, and, and you have your own authority where what you say matters. Um, it's so interesting. I was just chatting with my mum earlier today about this. I'll share this with you because it's come into my mind now. And we were talking about how um, well, I raised the point about how Michael Jackson, there was a time when he was working with Quincy Jones and, you know, he kind of needed Quincy's approval for things. But then there, there came a time where he was just like, Quincy was like, no, you shouldn't do that. And he was like, yeah, I'm going to do this. I think it was... Um, Billie Jean. And I think Quincy said it's a rubbish song. It should just be a B-side or something. And he was just like, well, no, I'm going to, I love this. I'm going to do it. And I think that was when he parted ways. So that's an inner authority thing. That's a, I'm going to do this, you know, um, I'm going to, I'm going to trust myself. It, it's that kind of thing. So you've got that, that's a new moon thing. So that's brilliant. Maybe you're going to, you know, um, press ahead with something that's it's really important to you. That's exciting. That's on the 10th of July. We've got a full moon in your fourth house on the 24th of July. So hopefully something completes in relation to your home life. Could be a dynamic with your mum uh, or something to do with your mother. Something will complete there. Uh, you'll come to a new understanding. You'll come to a fullness around some issue to do with home or mother or so something like that come to a new understanding maybe. So Libra, this is a great month for you to do quite a bit of healing actually. I'm loving this month for you because you've got that, you've got look mother father stuff there as well, which you're going to be able to, to hopefully come to some newness about, some completion around some of those things. I think this is amazing, amazing month for you Libra. And look at that, you, you drew out of me a Michael Jackson story as well. So nobody else got that. <laughs> All right, so we're now going to welcome Scorpio. Scorpio, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, we've got Jupiter retrograde. That is the big news this month. And we've got Jupiter retrograde in your fourth house. Jupiter is lord of your fifth and second houses. So I'm just looking at that now. In the context of healing, this is an excellent time from now until mid-September for you to work with experts and gurus to heal anything around your home life, any blockages in your creativity or something to do with your children, okay, uh, and your family. Look at that. I mean, all of that is so interrelated. That's all just, just one area, isn't it? That's, um, 
you know, you make a win in any one of those areas and it's going to impact all three. So we've got home life, creativity or children and your family. So I mean, this, this is, yeah, this is, this is really one area here. And you've got terrific potential to heal anything that you want to heal there from 1 July to 20 July. That's when Jupiter is in Sattva Bishak Nakshatra. So while he is there, that is going to be a great time to heal something. Now, new moon is happening in your eighth house. That's 10th July. So your extended family relations, there might be some renewal there. There might be some understanding that you come to. There might be a wish actually, because this is a new moon. So let's plant a seed. And this could be planting a seed, something to do with your extended family, your spouse's family. Uh, it could be something to do with shared wealth as well, or shared assets. So perhaps there might be a wish there or, or something that you, you want to have renewed. There's an energy of renewal here. And there's a full moon happening in your third house, that's 24th July. So hopefully something completes in relation to your confidence. Maybe you come to a new understanding uh, about yourself. Could be in relation to your friends. I know Scorpio, we've talked about this. We've talked about your friends, haven't we? Um, and how you've been you know, dealing with some stuff there. This could be, things come to a culmination. You come to some full understanding. I think this could be about yourself and your confidence um, because this is an inward time. We've got strong Satabhi Shark energy here, Jupiter retrograding there. I do think this is, this is a time of uh, inner work and confidence. I've also got for you, Scorpio, a bigger synthesis of all of this is that this is a ripe time for something to happen with property or inheritance as well. I think I did mention shared assets, didn't I? But yeah, because I've got quite a family thing going on here. Um, and we've also got, we've also got that new moon there. Eight from your sign. So Scorpio, I do think this is going to be a good month for you. I think this is going to be a good month for everybody if we choose to go within. And <coughs> apologies. Great month if we choose to go within. And if we choose to kind of be, be a bit inward focused, be unafraid to deal with demons within, with the shadows within. We've all got them, okay? <laughs> Everybody. Everybody on the planet. Otherwise, you wouldn't incarnate on Earth. You know, this is, this is that kind of place. So uh, this is a great time to do some proper healing work. So Scorpio, thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to meet Sagittarius. Sagittarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So now we've got Jupiter retrograding in your third house. And Jupiter is the lord of your fourth and first houses. So in the context of healing, this is going to be an excellent time from now until mid-September for you to work with experts and gurus to heal anything around your sense of personal courage, your home life, or anything to do with the home. And relations, family relations, but especially yourself, who you are as, as a person. This is going to be an amazing time. If there's anything, and that third house and first house is really, to me, I, I do see that as linking in there and being quite similar. It's that, how do you feel about yourself? It's a great time to go within, to go deep within and to look at that and to see what that is. Sometimes we can be surprised. Sometimes we think we know ourselves and it turns out we don't. <laughs> and that's especially if you're, working, well, if you're working with a guru or an expert or a healer, you can be pretty amazed as to what's going on there in your subconscious, things that you, you didn't know, you know. Uh, and they can be good and they can be not so good. It's pretty amazing. So the possibility for healing is especially good while Jupiter transits Sattva Bishak Nakshatra, and that's from 1 July to 20 July. It's going to be an absolutely superb time to do healing work. You can do that on your own. You can do that with people. It doesn't matter. Um, 
I always say that if you work with people or if you hire experts or you do any of that, you know, you're working with an intermediary that is going to speed up the process. Okay, but <clears throat> you can get there on your own. You can get there for free and on your own, right? You don't have to spend any money. Uh, now the new moon is happening in your seventh house. So that's 10th July. There could be a renewal in a significant partnership. It could be a business partnership, could be a marriage, could be your partner, uh, all kinds of different things, right? But a significant renewal in a, in a significant partnership. You could also see this as your partnership with the divine, your partnership with the universe. You know, you can look at it in that way too. There's going to be a full moon in your second house. That's 24th July. So hopefully something completes in relation to close family relations or your major wealth, your big wealth and savings, that kind of thing. Um, something might complete in that area. So Sagittarius, it's looking like a pretty good month. I tell you, for all signs across the board, it is an excellent month for healing. So do make sure you get some alone time, some me time, some quality time to go within this month. This is a really good month for that, especially 1 July to 20 July. All right. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome Capricorn. Capricorn. Welcome Capricorn. Thank you so much for joining. So you've got Jupiter retrograde in your second house. And Jupiter is Lord of your third and twelfth houses. So in the context of healing, this is really an excellent time from now until mid-September to work with experts and gurus to heal anything to do with your ability to speak up. <coughs> Interestingly, my voice is starting to go when I mentioned speak up. I've had to start your segment something like three or four times. So I don't know what's going on, Capricorn, but there's something going on. I'm going to continue. I, I'm like, that's it. I've got my water here. I can continue. But <clears throat> it's really interesting. For you, this is about your ability to speak up. So I don't know if something's got someone, some, something's got something going on out there where they're having trouble speaking up, especially having trouble speaking up to so, something to do with family. We've got Jupiter retrograding in your second house there. So yes, it's ability to speak up, but it's in, it's in, there's a context. It's, and we've got here, so what you need to focus on this month is healing anything to do with your ability to speak up, your confidence and your spirituality. So <clears throat> maybe, this is fascinating, I've had to start, stop and start this three or four times. I'm determined, I'm just going to continue, that this might be for someone out there that... You're having difficulty speaking up. Um, there's some lack of confidence, something to do with your spirituality. Maybe, maybe it's, um, it, it is a thing of you're having trouble being your true self in front of someone. That's what's going on here. So you're going to have an opportunity to heal this. Now, the dates that are going to be really important, that's when Jupiter transits Satta Bishak Nakshatra. <coughs> from 1st July to 20th of July. I'm feeling it's starting to get a bit better. How amazing. My voice has been just perfectly fine this whole time. And then when we get to you and there's this thing about speaking up, my voice is having a challenge. So that's fascinating. Um, but really the key dates are going to be 1st July to 20 July. Satta Bishat Nakshatra. That's going to be the time to heal. Now we've got a new moon happening in your sixth house. That's the 10th of July. So there could be a renewal in regards to how you compete. Uh, maybe you are going to try something new, actually. This could be a time where you try something different. You know, perhaps you look at the competition. Maybe they're all doing it, things the same and you decide, I'm going to do this totally differently. So <clears throat> this would be a good time for that, 10th of July. How you put yourself forward. You could also experience some renewal in, yeah, in, how, in how you compete, how you put yourself forward. I'm seeing Gemini there in, in the sixth house. So sure, um, how you present yourself as well could be something you might want to innovate with also. 
there's a full moon happening in your first house that's the 24th of July so hopefully something completes in relation to your sense of self <clears throat> we do know Capricorn I'm gonna have to take a sip of water I'm telling you I have stopped and started like three times so I'm just gonna hang out with you for a little bit because I don't know I feel the need to <laughs> and I'll try to get the frog out of my throat while I'm here because we got Aquarius and Pisces to go and I, I want to be able to get through those um, so hopefully something unblocks it's it's a throat chakra thing some someone needs some throat chakra unblocking I, I think that's what's going on how amazing this energy stuff and it's <clears throat> it's incredible when I do this for the pick a card people sometimes my voice will block up there sometimes it doesn't I've had so many readings where the voice has been perfectly fine also with personal readings as well I'm noticing that this is a bit of a thing where um, you know I do the personal reading I can speak for like an hour non-stop and no voice problem and then but then when there is something like this it's usually somebody in that collective group that's going through something and it just needs clearing it's kind of like how I one of the things I say is that it's like um, it's like dust on a record and the needle is kind of scratching or it's going over you know and because we're we're all connected and, and we're um, yeah it's just fascinating like the needle goes over something and it's because we're all connected it's quite incredible anyway I could go on and on for hours but I won't Capricorn I do think this is going to be a good month for you if you and I know you're in if you're a Capricorn moon here you're in the height of Sadesate I know this is tough keep going but this is a beautiful opportunity to heal and especially from 1st July to 20th July Satta Bishak Nakshatra if you choose to do some healing with a guru or an expert or a practitioner say for example ancestral clearing DNA cleansing all these kind of things all these amazing things where they work on your etheric body your aura <clears throat> if you're going to choose my voice is so much better now if you're going to choose I'm glad I stuck around with you if you're going to choose to do any of that work um, be prepared it's 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 not all light and wonderful there's darkness there's shadows there's demons as well and and, and you know uh, if you are going to do any of that work be brave you know and do it do it see what comes see what happens uh, and of course you can also just do meditations for free on the internet perhaps there are going to be some old books that you love that you revisit maybe it's something like that you don't have to work with a guru or any of that they speed the process um, also you don't have to spend money on any of this either you can do all of this for free so but this is very much a really fantastic time to heal and I do think that there are some lovely Capricorn people out there <coughs> still going who, who are having trouble speaking up so um, I know that it's you'll heal it you'll do it you will you'll, you'll you'll resolve it you will I've got full faith you guys are the champions of the zodiac right now I've said this um, you're gonna you're gonna come out amazing Capricorn so keep keeping on okay we're now going to welcome Aquarius Aquarius welcome thank you so much for joining <clears throat> now I was just in Capricorn coughing away let's see what happens for you I hope this improves um, Jupiter what's Jupiter doing that's what we're focusing on we are focusing on Jupiter and retrograde he's retrograding in your first house look at that my voice is getting better it was the Capricorn people oh my god it's not you good um, Jupiter now what's Jupiter doing he is the Lord of your second and eleventh houses so he's going to be in your first house what's going on here now in the context of healing this is going to be an amazing time from now until mid-September to work with experts and gurus to heal anything to do with your whole self your family and your ability to manifest wealth and I would even say your ability to manifest opportunities your ability to manifest good fortune good luck okay let's expand this a little bit let's not just make this about wealth this is about more than that so the potential to heal is is quite great um, if you heal any one of these it's going to make quite an impact in your whole life so 
if you can achieve any healing and if you work with a guru or an expert what I believe there is that you can speed the process yeah maybe you have to spend a bit of money um, but you know it's worth it right if you can speed things up um, but you don't have to and there's a lot you can do on your own for free I mean look at Eckhart Tolle he had an amazing awakening totally free didn't consult anyone didn't spend any money so that's possible right um, now the greatest possibility for this healing that I'm talking about is when Jupiter transits Satya Bishak Nakshatra and that's from 1st July to 20th July so that's across the board for everybody uh, every single sign everybody can heal I do believe a lot of things if if you really want to during this time now we've got a new moon happening in your fifth house so that's 10th of July so there could be a renewal of your creativity and that's something really to and it could be a renewal in your relationship with your children as well maybe you're gonna have more fun with your kids you know and um, gosh wouldn't that be great so that would be a lovely thing but in terms of your personal creativity and your expression and, and what it is you want to share with the world maybe you're going to have a, a renewal here maybe you're going to have an aha moment maybe you're going to download some great creative ideas so maybe this is a really good time to keep a notepad with you or just do voice memos on your phone you know uh, now we've also got a full moon happening in your 12th house okay so that's the 24th of July so hopefully something completes in relation to your spirituality wow or maybe you graduate or you you could come to some really profound understandings here Aquarius this is very exciting so again that could be a time where you want to keep a notebook capture the downloads this could be feeding into your creativity as well uh, in some way very exciting Aquarius and I've got the note here that in the context of healing this is really interesting this could be the end of any significant energy leaks or loss of energy that you've been facing so energy leaks are such an important thing and where where do we leak energy to sometimes we are not even aware of uh, the different energies that that might be feeding on us or, or whatever it is you know um, and I do tend to think that this is a thing that happens with empaths empathic people kind people people who've been trained to ch from childhood to be kind and generous and be there for the other person and be giving and all this kind of thing sometimes that early childhood training yes it's magnificent in some ways and it, it makes you a very kind person and, and wonderful and all that kind of thing but equally uh, in such spaces negative uh, energy forms can be you know siphoning off your energy unbeknownst to you right so it's really fascinating so maybe if and I'm not able to particularly recommend anybody to work with but in your area you'll be able to find or on the internet as well online people are doing amazing work through zoom your person doesn't need to be in your local area they could be anywhere in the world but uh, if this is a time where you want to work with an energy healer maybe just to check how you're doing or whatever then I'm suggesting this could be a really good time to do that so Aquarius is great month ahead great month to go within great month to do inner work uh, I wish you well and we are now going to welcome Pisces Pisces welcome thank you so much for joining I love coming to your part of the zodiac because I'm kind of towards the end and I can relax here a little bit I was coughing so much in Capricorn there's some Capricorn people out there who really have their throat chakra quite blocked I'm just so glad that that's not happening now <laughs> right what's going on you've got Jupiter retrograde in your 12th house yes you do I've just got the chart up as well you've got Jupiter Lord of your first and your 10th houses so in the context of healing this is an excellent time from now until mid-September to work with experts and gurus to heal anything to do with your spirituality your physical body and your ability to work as well this is quite amazing and that look at that your physical body because the the more um, 
Well, of course, the more physically fit you are, the more work you're able to do, right? So that, those two are really linking in there with each other. So if you are able to, to do some good work on your physical body, very interesting. And also your spiritual self as well. So now the possibility for healing is especially good while Jupiter transits Satta Bishak Nakshatra. That's from 1 July to 20 July. I'm saying this across the board for all signs. Doesn't matter what sign you are. This is just an excellent, excellent time to do healing work, to really go within, to really, to really look and see, explore the light and dark that's within you. Uh, we have a new moon happening in your fourth house. That's 10th July. So there could be a renewal in something to do with your home or your home life. We've also got a full moon in your 11th house, 24th of July. So hopefully something completes in relation to your ability to manifest opportunities and or wealth. Let's have a look at that. Yes, it is in your 11th house. Okay, and you've got Saturn there as well. I mean, this should be a time, Pisces, where I'm sure I've said this many times to you, that where opportunities should be coming thick and fast. I'm really hoping that because of Saturn's placement there uh, in your 11th, he's really wanting to help you build that next platform up. So I'm hoping that this full moon brings something to you bring something your way um, or it could be a foundation stone that is setting up the next thing or you know because there are so many energies out there and especially if you've ever studied human design I'm a big student of human design and uh, you know one of the big things that they teach there is that especially for certain energy types and I'm one of these types where I have to wait for the energy to build and I have to wait for the invitation otherwise I can't start something myself and it's so fascinating because yeah this full moon kind of has that feel for you where I feel like it might be building up some energy out there for that that next opportunity to come in it's quite interesting the energetic type to look out for for those who need to wait for the invitation that's a projector type in human design so if you want to check that out I'll give you the web address it's Jovian Archive I think it's called jovianarchive.com I'll put it up on the screen you can check out your human design type and see which one you are it's really really fascinating I love that system of astrology okay guys well I think I've come to the end now <laughs> I hope you have a good month ahead everyone and I hope that this is a really great month De definitely in terms of of going within and don't worry about what's happening in the collective try to switch off the news as much as possible this month uh, I know that yes Jupiter in Satya Bishak this can potentially kick up some unpleasant things in the collective as well I do know that I haven't focused on that uh, I'm really going to keep my focus squarely on healing this month, my healing my own personal self. I do believe this, we've got some strong, strong energies in order to be able to make some gains in terms of our own personal healing. So I wish all of you out there well. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, thank you as well to all of those of you who have subscribed, all of those of you who like these videos and interact on the channel it really helps to keep me relevant in the YouTube algorithm algorithm so thank you so much for that and I look forward to seeing you next time mm -hmm.